everybody, and welcome to Command Point. This is, if you've been following along, you know what day it is. It's the 11th day of Kill Team, and it's very festive here. And uh, we are talking about none other than the uh, the Chaos Space Marines, the Legionnaires that came in the Nachmund box, I believe. And uh, I'm joined here today by a uh, uh, Legionnaire expert, uh, sensor lock on the discord uh bob uh how's it going it's going great thanks yeah so i mean first of all it's good to good to have you on i'm i'm excited to hear uh some of your thoughts on on the legionnaires i know you've been playing them since they came out uh since before they came out kind of i played trader space <laughs> marines before them so yeah and that was uh that was god it's weird to even think about trader space marines <laughs> yeah um it's been a while but uh anyway i mean let's get right into it. So for starters, I'm coming into Legionnaires brand new. I've never, never played them before. I don't really know much about them. For somebody that was trying to get into the faction and pick up the kill team, um, how would you describe their kind of their their play style, broadly speaking? Yeah, I think there's two main parts of it. The first one is the more obvious one is that they're an elite team, six bodies, right? So you have to think about how that plays into the larger teams. Yeah. Uh, the other side of it is they're a very flexible team. They've got really great melee options, really good shooting options, and you can kind of tailor it back and forth for every game to match what you want to try and do in that particular game. Very nice. So there's definitely that elite flexibility where, where you don't have a lot of guys, but the guys you do have can do a lot of different things and you can kind of tailor them, which is cool. Yeah, um, exactly. So speaking on a personal level for you, because you're a big Legionnaire player, uh, what, what about that play style that you just described? How do you connect to it? What, what, what do you like about that? Yeah, I think that's that whole thing is the main uh, part of the team I really like. I like at the start of each game, I sit down, I see wh who my opponent is, I see the map, I see the mission we're going to play, and I can really think about how am I going to approach this game? Mm -hmm. And not just say, oh, what's the list that I'm going to take every time? It's okay, this is the situation. I'm playing against a specific team. I think my opponent's going to try and do this. I want to try and do this to either prevent what they're doing or get ahead of them. It really gives you a chance to sort of think about what your opponent's going to do and try and counter it. Uh, and because you're so flexible, you can shift to the side of the game that your opponent's going to have a harder time to deal with. So if you know they're going to tear you up in melee, then you set back and shoot. Uh, if you know they can't handle the melee at all, then you run in there and hit them with chain swords. Right, and you're kind of creating mismatches that way on the board. Right. Okay. Exploit the weaknesses because your team has that flexibility. All right, really cool. Um, uh, how, about, how about like learning curve-wise for a newer player coming in? Like for you, uh, for example, like how long did it take? How many games roughly before you started to – it started to click for you and you, the team started to make a lot more sense? I think there's kind of like two phases to the learning curve with this team. There's the first step of just – learning the abilities, learning the influence of the different marks and what's going to happen there. And that is pretty fast. Uh, that's just a few games for me to get into that level of understanding. The The next step beyond that is learning everybody else's teams as well. So you know which way to to bend your team and, and use that flexibility. And that kind of comes with a lot more games. But I think that initial curve is really fast with this team. Right. And I mean, they've got the whole... Uh... Corn, Nurgle, Slanesh, Zinj thing, and then, and then like undivided too. So there's like it's almost like there's five teams in this one team. Yeah, and they all yeah. they all play sounded a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your favorite? Uh, so I played Nurgle for a long time, which is sort of the broadly most popular. Um, but now I've kind of settled into I play Nurgle on Into the Dark for the most part, and Zinj on the open maps. Mm -hmm. And part of that is just because Nurgle has some unique benefits in the end of the dark rules where they can guard without a penalty when they use mm -hmm. the implacable ploy. Yeah. That is smart. And obviously the Zinch very good at shooting, which they're uh, also is... very, yeah, the Zinch is good at shooting and they're also very good at uh, capitalizing on opportunities. So the fact they can give one guy an extra APL, uh, lets them, you know, do things your opponent might not be expecting. Nice. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, the extra APL can be pretty cool. Um, so I guess moving on, in terms of just like a, like an eye-catching moment, like say somebody's walking by, uh, and you're playing at a tournament and they stop and watch your game, um, 
what is like the coolest like flashiest play that legionnaire have that comes to your mind if somebody's walking by and they see your game and and you just do something awesome and crazy like what is that play for you i I think for me that's probably something i actually tried to do uh and the dice abandoned me at uh the nova open this year in the final game uh that i played where uh uh i was up against another legionary team and i managed to run a nurgle melta gunner straight up to his leader Uh, and then use the mal- malignant aura tac- uh, tactical ploy, which will uh, remove one defense from any unit within three. And okay. it was able to, so basically with the AP2 of the melted gun and the malignant aura, there was no save die rolled. They don't get by, armor saves. <laughs> they don't get an armor save at all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the melted shot didn't go off, but I- I've used that in a couple of games, and it's a really great thing to just... You want to make sure someone's really dead. <laughs> it works pretty well. Uh, and the other side of that that a lot of people overlook is that the aura lasts till the end of the turn. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. your melta gunner is now standing there in the middle of a whole bunch of guys making your other shooting better until they get get away from him or kill him. That's really interesting. I actually forgot about that. I, did, I forgot that it wasn't just for that activation. Um, I did have a... I, I saw somebody playing Slanesh uh, Legionary once that was doing something really funny where they would they would have their, their Shrive Talon charge a uh, like a 2 APL model and then use the Slanesh ploy to take away an APL from, from the model that they charge. So that way they're stuck in combat and they can't fall back. And if they fight the, the Shrive Talon, then the Shrive Talon gets to fight first or strike first, basically. Um, and yeah. so they're just like caught in melee and they can't run away and they can't fight. And it was just... It was really funny. Yeah, and I, I mentioning the Shrive Talon, that also goes to sort of the other play that I thought of when you asked that question, which is specifically a domination mission thing, where if you have a Zinch Shrive Talon, uh, you can give him that extra APL, which gives him enough action points to move Dash onto the center objective and Grizzly mark it. So for the rest of the game, it'll cost your opponent two action points to flip the center objective. Oh, yeah. And that's really great against uh, two APL teams because it just makes it a real struggle for them to take that back from you at any point. And now there's a Shrive Talon in Conceal on the middle point protecting it for at least the first turn or two. Yeah. I mean, you either have to devote a whole turn or like a whole comms activation just to get the point. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But yeah, very cool. Very cool. So uh, how about matchups wise? Um, First, like what would you say their best matchups are as far as the good teams in the meta right now? Like, what are Legionnaires good against? Uh, you know, this is... That's a, a tough question for me. I think it goes a lot into the play style of the person mm-hmm. playing the Legionaries. For me, my favorite thing to play into is seven-wound and eight-wound teams. So I like to bring out the corn operatives and kind of spend a turn sneaking up and then pounce and use perpetual aggression to tear up a bunch of different guys. Uh, I think that's the main thing. Uh there aren't any teams that it really, really struggles against um, in that sense. Okay. There's a few teams that are harder. Yeah, I was going to ask what the hardest matchup is. Like, So what is a characteristic of a team that would be difficult for, for Legionnaire? Yeah, I think the uh, – well, Pathfinders is one uh, mm-hmm. just because, you know, I mentioned uh, they were seven wounds, right? But they, uh, they have really good shooting and yeah. can sort of – pick off your guys uh, if you're not careful in advancing them. The other ones that I think are challenging are those that can sort of out-melee you. Uh, intercessors can be tough if you try to go toe-to-toe with them uh, in melee, just because of their some of their abilities to like change melee, uh, the melee math or to take away crits and things like that. Uh, yeah. They also have more wounds, so you can't just kill them in one or two hits like you could yeah. smaller models they're pretty tanky too yeah um, yeah the other one that i think is uh has been a challenge for me at least has been hunter clade uh because after their upgrades uh they now have uh lots of guys with power swords running at you and plasma and heavy guns in the back that can really do a lot of damage to marines so that's a tough match in my mind it sounds like a lot of teams are struggling into hunter clade these days so uh legion yeah. are definitely not alone on that one um Okay, how about turn one? Because I think turn one is something I really like to highlight with a lot of teams. And in, I guess it depends on if you're into the dark or open. But let's say an open board, which is, uh, I'd say, most games. Um, uh, what's your general approach on turn one with, with Legionnaires? 
my general setup phase uh, for the game is turn one. It's all about getting into position and preparing turn two so that you've got multiple options at the start of turn two. No matter what your opponent does, you're going to be able to push them. And you know you've done it right when your opponent says, I don't know which side to attack first in turn two. It's Because you've got so few guys, I think you really want to keep them in heavy cover. And you want to keep them in a mutual support distance, not just turn one, but throughout the game. So if you get your guys at the very edges of the board and something goes wrong on one side or the other, they won't be able to get there fast enough to help from the far side of the board. So I try to you know, keep them close enough that a move or a move and a dash will let other uh, legionaries get over there to reinforce. Makes sense. Okay. Very cool. Uh, and then I guess to, as we, as we near the end of the, uh, of the interview here, um, if you were to give one like kind of like super spicy tip, like secret tip to somebody that was getting into uh, into the team uh, just to set them on the right path, what would that be? Yeah, I don't know how spicy this tip is, but I think the biggest piece of advice I have is to learn all the options of the team. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, Nurgle's not the only competitive mark. Uh, you know, Zinch, Korn are all strong too. And Slanesh has its place, but it's challenges. Yeah. And learning all the the options of the operatives, that really helps you try something different in each game. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I can give an example of that is everyone looks at the Balefire Acolyte and sees Fire Blast. Yeah. and sees how much damage that can do. And you have that vision of your mind of the glorious turn where you blow up half their team with one fire blast. Yeah. But he's also a melee powerhouse. Yes. And you want to remember that so that when you see the opportunity, uh, that guy being able to malign influence himself, charge, fight something, and then stand there with a uh, buffed pistol for the rest of the turn so that he can overwatch, uh, that's a really powerful move. And so keeping your mind open to all the abilities on each of your operatives is important. Very nice. Very cool. I, I, I like that tip. That's I'm kind of like in on the fence about diving into legionaries myself right now. And, uh, that is, that is helpful to know to, uh, from just from a perspective standpoint. So, uh, I'm asking this to everybody. Uh, so this is the, this is the secret question at the end. Actually the most important question. Uh, do you have a favorite Christmas song? And if so, what is it? Oh man! Um, no, didn't include this one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know that I do. No favorite. I, I no favorite. I, you know, the first thing comes. To, I can tell you the first thing comes to mind though is okay. the old novelty songs. Yeah. Like you know the grandma got ran over by a reindeer type stuff. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'm I'm collecting these answers. That's the one question I'm not leaving in the. Uh... <laughs> in the show notes all right but anyway uh thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about about legionnaires on the uh on the 11th day of uh of kill team um i hope that uh everybody in uh watching enjoyed this video and and uh piqued their interest enough to to go dive into the team a little bit more on their own uh and of course as always thank you to our subscribers and our patrons uh, whether it's at uh, YouTube membership or on patreon.com slash command point. You guys are awesome. And if you're listening and you're you're not subscribed to the channel, give it a consideration because there is a lot of Kill Team content on the way. Uh, this is Shane talking to Sensor Lock about Legionnaires uh, signing out.